we've painted the new Blood Angels for Games Workshop. So Adam painted it in the sort of traditional iconic scheme, uh, which is really great. You had some fun with the new upgrades, bro. Joy to paint, like I must say. Ugh, I hate him. <laughs> I just hate him. Look at this. Uh, yeah, I absolutely loved this model from the moment I saw it. Have you got a favourite character from a book or piece of artwork and thought to yourself, if only that had a miniature? Custom Service is our character creation brand here at Siege Studios. Custom Service is not just a kit bash. We create miniatures using traditional hand sculpting alongside conversion for entirely unique and bespoke miniatures that will blow you away. Our talented team of sculptors methodically and meticulously bring your thoughts into reality with the precise, refined and sharp work you'd expect from a digital sculpt and pair that with our world-class painting team for an incredible display piece you'll be proud to own. To bring your character to life and get a quote now, head to siegestudios.co.uk or head to the link in this episode's description. Hello everyone and welcome to Paint Perspective episode 65. The Blood Angels are here. Games Workshop kindly sent us the brand new army set in advance for review. Uh, we'll be talking about all of the miniatures that are included in that. Myself and James painted some of them as you'll see in the episode. Uh, but first, before we get into all of that juicy detail, uh, War Boot was this weekend. Yes. yes. <laughs> it's, happened again. Yeah, it's, it's happened again. It's happened again. How did Warburg go? It was great. Yeah, it was great. Yeah, like a glove. Yeah. August. Sorry, August is always a bit of a funny one because you got holidays, you got kids off school, so like families do things. It was bank holiday weekend as well. So, yeah. um, so it goes one of two ways: either we're going to get a, a horde of three hundred and fifty odd people of coming in, yeah. or not so many because it's a bank holiday. No, it was, it was still holiday. decent. I think we still, it was had, good. I think we still had about just shy of 200 people. So it wasn't... Well, wasn't let's bad. do our due diligence just in case anyone's uh, missed out what's happening. What is War Boot? War Boot is a wargaming boot sale, hence the name. Um, it's, war Boot. Yeah, War Boot. Um, it is every three months held at Barley Lands, which is uh, like a recreational park. Um, it's got like a farm on it. It's got like some shops. It's got loads of different things on it. It's, Lots it's of other like, craft things. Yeah, there craft, as well. craft But most craft importantly, thing. a Warhammer sale. Yeah. Of yeah. Sort. Yeah, so Warhammer, we're there, so that's the most, sale. Important thing. It's the most important thing. Mm. Yeah. Um, and you've also got uh, Off World Outpost, which is a shop there. So they sell loads of Warhammer, mm. loads of Pokemon cards, all the, the Yu-Gi-Oh, all the, all the things you yeah. can shake a stick at. So, all yeah. the nerd stuff. Yeah, all the, yeah every nerd box you could but tick. most importantly for you it's uh fish in a barrel of a load of retro warhammer stuff that you can nab yeah oh, certainly yeah any is. did you partake in any purchases james so paul testified wow. to this well <laughs> hang on a minute. So, but paul every testified. time we, we we leave about half past seven in the morning right the first stop we make is a cash point machine normally every time <laughs> And he, always, and he always says, oh, I, I don't think I'm going to get anything this time. Yeah, all right, well, you know, I'll just ignore it, sort of brush it off. Uh, but th this time he didn't go to the cash machine. So I thought, okay, fair enough. He's not going to buy anything. And then, yeah. and then he said, well, I could, I've got cards. Or, you know, there is bank transfers. Yeah. I mean, the thing is, is like, we were, um, we were, we, we got there. Mm. So we always get, obviously get there early. We're setting up. Yeah. And um, do you know why we get there early? That's what? so that I can spend two hours of my time setting up <laughs> and uh, James, James can, can spend, spend the other two hours, hours looking going around, around yeah. all the stalls before any of the actual whoa, 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 turn whoa. up I, to I, collect all the best bits I, and I, bring them back. He goes, oh, I, I didn't buy anything. And he's trying to shove it in his bag and stuff like that. It's not, as, I mean, I think Paul's he's, being, he's Paul's not, being a, bit, a bit colourful with, with the story. I mean, mm. yeah, maybe not. But, um, <laughs> but, but um, yeah, so, so I, I managed to get a few little bits uh, and I went in there with the honest intention of not getting anything I said to myself I'm not going to get anything he says this every time every time it's yeah, so I, it's a it's, you're it's, you're lying you're either lying to us or you're lying to yourself <laughs> either way you're lying <laughs> it's not intentional it's not it's, it's not with any malice or, or, so so yeah. uh, in all fairness though as soon as we get in there there's certain members that turn up to sell things that go, oh, James, yeah, I've got yeah. that thing that you mentioned last time we were yeah, here. Yeah, that, that did happen And then this that time. starts the, the snowball rolling down the hill. It, it did happen this time, mm, yeah. That's the thing. I, I had a conversation with someone last war boot about a specific thing. And, you do a uh, man about a dog. And, uh, yeah. So the and, dog um, came to this one. <laughs> yeah. No, I got, I, I, I got two things, which I was... Two quite, bags of things. I got two things, <laughs> which... which uh, so I got a, a sealed... Um, out of production set of all the chapter masters uh, that basically uh, they released a limited 25 year anniversary box that they had done a chaos one and they done like enemies of the Imperium one and they done like mm. an Imperial one. It's got, um, it's got all the chapter masters from all the main chapters in it. It's got the Black Emperor's Champion, the Fisherman model, the, the OG Fisherman one mm. that's fishing. Um, it's got quite a few, it's got the limited edition um, fourth, uh, third edition captain, so the Black Templar's captain in it. So, 
Um, so yeah, I got that. And then the other thing, which I genuinely didn't even know was going to happen was uh, back in the day when uh, Black, Lib Black Library used to do limited edition models. So one of my favorite stories from Black Library back in the day was Blood Quest, which was yeah. a story about Captain Leonatus who loses a, a sword, gets exiled from the Blood Angels, has to go into the Eye of Terror to find this sword, etc. So it's a story of him and a close three, It's like you've three left brothers. your plume souls at school. Basically. Go back in there and <laughs> don't come back until you <laughs> found, found them. Found them. Yeah, yeah. Except with yeah. loads of orcs and chaos <laughs> and like Eye of Terror and demons <laughs> and, you know, Nurgle. And, um, uh, and Black Library released a set which was Scout Sergeant Lysander and Brother Clotten, which is like Clotten's like one of my favourite Blood Angel characters, um, like type like from the past. And so they released a set, and uh, a chap that I got some books, the books that I got from the the chap that I got the books from last time, said, "Oh, I found this in my loft. Hmm. Do you want it?" And I was like, um, "Yes." So, so how, how many books did you buy? So no books. So you had two. No books. Oh, actually, no. So tell like, tell like, I did. I've, I bought, I bought, they're really, they're really, really good value. They're really good Re value. Really, for good, really value. good value for money. So they were completely crisp. Cost per hour, pretty low. <laughs> Don't start <laughs> I didn't make any profit, I think. <laughs> Don't start that. Um, it was the fourth edition Bell Angel Codex and mm. fourth edition Orc Codex. Uh, so, I yeah. have to admit, it is quite nice in the older codexes. But they're yeah. brand new, yeah, like yeah. literally the mm. brand, they're brand new. Not even, not even like, like, you know, you know, when you open a book, you get that new book smell. Mm. It was like that. I was, I was with like, a pinch of loft. Yeah. With, with a pinch, pinch of loft. Essence, essence, loft. De, essence de loft. <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 It's great. Yeah. I have to admit that the, the box set of all the chapter masters that you bought, as soon as I saw it, I thought, that's a good set. It was yeah. nice, pristine box. It's still wrapped. It's still sealed. Oh, yeah. That was a good sealed. purchase. That Did you was... buy anything poor or were you busy slaving away on the I'm, stand? I, I ain't got time to go around looking at, go shopping. I'm setting up. In I'm my defense. In my defense. I do help set up and I do help on the stands. You know what you should so do next time? Does, yeah. You should you should set up and Paul should get first dibs on all the stuff. I'm more happy for him too. Like, of course yeah. he can. Like, he, can, he can go around and get, can, yeah. get there'll first punch, There'll be fights, I tell you. <laughs> <laughs> when is the, uh, the next one? The next one is going to be the first weekend of December. Can I do? Can I give a shout out? Are we allowed to do shout out? Of course you can, yeah. yeah. Well, there was these four lads. I don't know if you remember them. I there. do, yes. Um, sadly, I, I didn't get any of their names, which is, you know, it's your Brilliant. one job, Paul. Just my one job. <laughs> <laughs> we had this, like, they were really enthusiastic Shout about Shout out to uh, those four someone. lads. <laughs> those four random lads in the, you know, war boot amongst the 200. But they, they were really enthusiastic. They come over to our table. They, mm -hmm. they been, it was the first one they'd been to. They travelled, they had driven for an hour to get there. Yeah. Um, and uh, they were so enthusiastic about the hobby. It was just, it was quite nice to see these quite, kind of, you know, four lads overly enthusiastic about everything they sort of spent some time with us and we chatted about the hobby and things yep. um they they'd seen us on the podcast and things so they they knew us from the podcast and everything else so they sort of well you know sort of little whirlwinded off around all the other tables and sort of came back and everything and i thought as they leave i'll get at least one of their names so i can shout them out but i i, I didn't so <laughs> uh, shout out to four anonymous Guys, lads. lads. Um, yeah. I mean, they will remember who they are. I'm sure. Um, I'm yeah, glad they go. remember who they are. Yeah. <laughs> I hope so. Do you <laughs> remember who you are? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Or just a shout out to everybody that went. To that. that just covers everyone. Then. Okay. Quick little PSA before we get into the listeners' comments. Good news, everyone. The Onyx, it's back. It was on back order for a while. You guys will not stop ordering. They've been flying off the shelves. They're back in stock. So check the link in the description of this episode if you want to grab. In my opinion, the best painting lamp for Warhammer. I've been using mine for years. Absolutely love it. Uh, we've always say that it's one of the best investments you can make into your hobby setup. It's really, really invaluable. Uh, so if you want to see more details on that, check the link in the description of this episode. It's back in stock. Hopefully you can get yourselves one before they sell out again, potentially. Uh, listen to comments. Let's do it. Gamer85Retro says, I wash my brushes out after every session uh, by using brush soap. Is it bad to do this every time? It's not as bad. I mean, like looking after stuff and being being diligent with cleaning is not like a bad thing. Um, I, I just be conscious that you're doing a lot of extra friction of the brush. You're using the brush a lot more, like every time you do it. Hmm. I, I if unless you're using like super super heavy body paints, like dense metallics or really heavy thick pigmented paints, maybe like the Fanatic set or stuff like that, um, or even like the Chimera paints and things. Um, you, you you probably want to give them a bit of a clean off using heavier body paints, specifically metallics as well, as I mentioned. Um, however, like a good rinse, making sure the brush head is clean at the end of the session and you still repoint it, you can use a brush for a week, you know, with, yeah. as long as you look after it, apply the two thirds rule, don't get paint on the ferrule, all that kind of stuff. And it should be fine. I, I think like you wouldn't 
wash your hair every single day, I suppose. Like, you know, it's, it's like strips it's, the it's, oils it's and stuff. Yeah. Yeah. Not that it produces oils, obviously, the, the brush, but but I still think that like you can overdo it sometimes. Unless you're painting with your actual head. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> <laughs> I mean that's hobby, hobby hack. hack. Hobby yeah. hack. <laughs> <laughs> just paint with your face. You've got a beard, just rub your face all over just it. Just headbutting the wet palette, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you could combine potato painting with your forehead yeah. as well. <laughs> Like, stamp the potato onto your face and then just whack your face on this the, is this yeah. is the knowledge that the people who come to rely on this podcast for. that's why I'm the amateur amongst you guys <laughs> uh, James Davies says glad I'm not alone with the tape on the brushes uh, I also use it to mark my metallic specific brushes so that's uh, in response to obviously last week we done the brush, brush care episode uh, yeah. James dropped his little nugget of putting a bit of tape yeah, as like I a little saw, marker I watched, I watched the episode because yeah. I'm like that like yeah. Unlike other uh, mainstay hosts on the podcast, who <laughs> not talking not about. To uh, I can't say. <laughs> <laughs> no, I did watch it. Uh, actually, I I used to do that with, mm-hmm. with tape on there because I used to have. Look, I haven't got so many brushes now, so I just. But I think from what the uh, listener was saying there, maybe it's a good idea to separate my metallic brushes because I think maybe they tend to splay first. I. Anyway. I know a lot of people just use specific brushes for metallics. They're worried about yeah. getting their regular brushes like ruined or whatever. You do you personally. I've yeah. always just used Doesn't the same matter. brushes for everything. Yeah. And oh, I've not had an issue with brushes I think until dying I got my... super fast. Maybe they would last a bit yeah, longer. Yeah. I don't know. But it's not like I, it's not like I get through brushes every week. So. Yeah. I think until I got my Rosemary and Co. brushes, mm. I used the same brushes for everything because I didn't have that many. But I tend to keep them you know, for the, for the special things. Now. Yeah. I will like, if I'm doing something like particularly careless, then I'll use like obviously a Slip lower dash. grade lower brush. Lower grade brush, yeah. But um, mm. I, I sort of have like a tier system. Once they start getting a bit blunt and like they're no longer useful for detail work, then they'll just become a like, say I'm doing like a big dreadnought or something. You've got to block in loads of metallic mm. stuff. Like I don't want to use my nice brush for that. So I'll just. I mean, I, 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 when my brushes tend to die a little bit, they become the brushes that then get paint out of the pot and put it on the palette. Use so that's what dropper use bottles, for God's sake. Save yourself the time. No, save yourself I'm the hassle. <laughs> no, I'm good. I'm good. Uh, no. <laughs> I'm All good. Right. Uh, on a similar note, uh, Free8601 says, I use coloured tape for different brushes. I class my brushes with a traffic light system. Ooh. Green tape are top quality, perfect point. Yellow are workhorse brushes, and red are brushes that I don't worry about. Uh, metallics, washes, basing, whatever. Great idea. Mm, yeah. yeah, I mean, I... I didn't try and invent a new hobby with that suggestion. No, no, that's a good idea. No, no, I'm standing by it. I'm I'm backing you on that one. I I, I actually, I, I always had this sort of tiered system going on, but I never used tape or anything. Visually color coded. And there have been many, many, many times where I've like put my good brush down and my like mid medium brush down, and at a glance, it takes a minute to like work out which one's which. (laughs) So that would that would mitigate all. That would also help me with. He's stopping using my fine detail brush as just a general dry brush as well. Oh, Paul. You know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> I need a small jet. That'll do. Get in there. <laughs> it's not very pointy anymore. Yeah. Uh, finally, Blast Beats Bolt Guns. Love that name. Uh, couldn't agree more on the point about wearing a mask for airbrushing and spraying aerosols. I'm big enough and ugly enough to make my own daft decisions. Spent the best part of my first year of using an airbrush without a mask have ensured to use a proper mask in recent months and the difference is honestly night and day look after your lungs yes good to see that very good mm-hmm. to see i think um even if you're not like someone who's aware i mean i spoke about i've done a whole psa on this last episode i'm not going to go into it again but um i think as well like it's one of those things that you don't realize uh it's necessarily a problem until you like eliminate it so like you wear the mask mm-hmm. you realize like oh hang on i don't have a headache after using the airbrush that's funny <laughs> I'm not so lightheaded yeah not as dizzy yeah, <laughs> my my favorite is the uh, blowing your nose after a paint session. It's just filled with paint. That's, yeah. that's lovely. Mm. Yeah, there's no there's no using any like chemicals and then running around your flat screaming Horace like you've taken <laughs> a, a black rage Horace. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it was good to see the response from that actually. Though there was a lot of people uh, sort of saying similar concerns for me that there's not great representation or leading by example in the YouTube space in particular. So it's good to see that other people picked up on that, and uh, it's nice to see mm. that the community is or a fair amount of them are taking the proper precautions. That's good to see. So I'd just say, encourage everyone to speak up about it because I think it's really, really important. I've got something to chuck in on that because mm. I, I said a specific filter number and the reason why I said that number is because that's what the code is on the filters on the one I've got at home. However, after some investigation, 
the serial number for the for the filters has changed. So there's a, there's actually a few new paint ones that mm. they released. So there used to be just one generic. I think one, I think M. it depends on the brand use as well. There's probably I'm loads of 3M. Yeah, 3M. Yeah, they've got a new. There's a couple of new serial numbers. So yeah. um, 3M's the brand that I use as well. Yeah, I think I they're. I think the. You can get like universal fit ones, but yeah. I would advise getting like the proper yeah. 3M ones. Okay, final little PSA before we get to the main topic. Just a reminder that our Patreon structure has changed. Uh, not for the worse, but for the better, of course. So uh, nothing's changing in terms of our existing tiers, but we have added loads of new benefits for those people who are already members and for anyone who wants to join. And we've added a new additional tier to our Patreon. If you want to get extended versions of all of these podcast episodes, uh, we've been doing it from the last three weeks and onwards. There'll be an extended one from today as well. Uh, you can get ad-free versions of the audio. You can get ad-free versions of the video. You can get extended versions of the video as well. So at the end of these podcasts, it uh, rounds out on YouTube. Uh, we do an additional 20, 30 minutes uh, every single week for these episodes. So if you want to get more paint perspective content in your life, uh, then check the link in the description of this episode to join our Patreon. In addition to that, of course, you always get our tutorials that we've spoken about previously. 350 plus PDFs, loads of videos, guides on painting characters, specific techniques, loads of cool stuff like that. So we really encourage you to check it out. Uh, main topic time, of course. We've painted the new Blood Angels for Games Workshop. Yeah. I'm a little oh. bit excited. You've a little bit excited. Them, well, people to, have, people have seen, to, seen the box behind you throughout the, uh, throughout the episode. It mm. is not a facade. James, you want to prove it's real? It is real. Most yeah, certainly. go on. Touch it. Touch it. Touch it. <laughs> <laughs> it is what you can do with the effects these days. Yeah. 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 Green screen. <laughs> <laughs> no, but I, I suppose the better proof is the, is the models on the table, of course. Yeah, uh, of course. So do you want to walk us through, I guess, the contents of the new what's box, what? what we think, what's going down? Yes. Yeah, so we've, you... we've, we've done a little bit of our thoughts on the new releases in some of the extended versions of the previous episodes. But well, now I don't you think... get to get my take on it. Yes. Yeah. Yes. yes. The most uh, important. So you're all. here, isn't it? Yeah. The mm. non non biased opinion, yeah. which is well, yeah, just, I don't care. well, we'll talk about it later on, Paul. But rumor has it that you're thinking about starting some Blood Angels. No, who said that? <laughs> <laughs> James, yeah. uh, do you want to walk us through your thoughts from the sort of uh, initial re reveals from GW from when they announced them mm. to getting the box in hand? What you think? Of the well, it was, it was good actually because I was ill when the releases were coming out, and like every Monday, I was getting like a, a pick me up, uh, which was quite good. Um, I think I think that there's obviously a unit which we'll talk about, which is a bit bit marmite, and I get that completely. Um, however, I'm pretty pretty happy with everything that's been done. Um, I think it's real difficult. I think ultimately, no matter what's done, it's, you're not going to please everybody. And I think that's just something just to just to sort of like say over overlaying in general to start off with, and also as well like until you see models in the flesh and a good 360 of them. You, you don't really hmm. get a true representation of the pose or the way the model is or things like that. And I'll talk about Lamartis specifically when it comes to talking about him, but like all the models, I mean, even the, even Astarath, which I didn't paint Adam from the team painted Astarath, but like, um, I, when you saw the photos, I was a bit like, Oh, it's the same, same sort of pose, etc. But then when you see it in the flesh, it, it is completely it's not different because it still acts raised as if he's about to, about to sort of end someone. But, um, but the slight tilt to the left and the change of pose, it takes on a whole new whole new sort of persona, which I think is really nice and has a lot more motion. It's a bit more dynamic. <laughs> mm. So I understand, it's a real difficult one for me because I'm kind of in the middle. I'm obviously very, very attached to the previous iterations of models for obvious reasons. And then obviously new ones have come along. And look, it's, I said this on my personal socials, like it's always good when your faction or your army that you love gets something new and shiny. Like I don't think... It, it might, whether you like the model or not, it's nice that your faction is actually getting. I mean, I feel sorry for Eldar mm. collectors because they haven't had a lot of new stuff for, 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 for 30 years. A long time, you mm. know? So, um, so, but what I was going to say was like, yeah, I, I thought I was quite happy with, uh, I'd say like 90% of everything that came out. The obvious one is is obviously Sanguinary Guard, which we spoke about in in, in depth and in length, obviously in the last uh, episode in the extra section at the which, end. Which to be fair, at present, we haven't got our hands on yet. So Again. we've got... The army set that's behind you. Yeah. And uh, just run over the contents of that. The new box uh, comes with Astrath and Amartes, obviously the two characters. Uh, you then get a Brutalist Dreadnought, which comes with uh, some accessories and upgrade bits to make it the Death Company version. Um, and then you also get some Assault Jump Pack Intercessors or Assault Marines. And then you also get some Assault Intercessors, which do not have Jump Packs. So, um, so yeah. And obviously you can make Death Company out of both of those. And you get four upgrade sprues in four the box. Four upgrade sprues, yeah, yeah, which is great. Um, I really, really like the upgrade sprue. I think it's got a, a lot of nice little trinkets and bits and bits. We, we can there. speak about that a little bit later on because the, the Captain I Painted features um, yeah. some of those new bits. Yeah. Um, what we, on the Sand Guard thing, it's, that's kind of the point I was making though, was 
seeing models in hand is often very, very different Correct, to yeah. seeing the photos of them, like you said. So I'm, I know the Sangard has been quite a controversial has, uh, yeah. sort of premium release. I, I don't dislike them as much as everyone else seems to, but I'm apprehensive to make a sort of decision on it until I've actually seen the kit mm. and seen them in hand. Because yeah. I think even with Astrath, for example, um, not that I disliked you weren't the photos. I wasn't 100% yeah. sure on the pose, not the model, but just the, the pose of the raised axe. But now seeing it in person, it looks like completely different to what I expected. And I've actually, it's actually grown on me a lot. Yeah. Um, and I think potentially that might be the case with some of the Sangard that are going to come out as well. So I'm slap bang in the middle with Sangard. Uh, I obviously love the old OG kit. I still think it's one of the best kits like for a specific chapter that, that, um, Games Workshop have made, in my opinion. It's got not, on, not only the fact it makes Sangard, but you just get so many amazing yeah. upgrade parts and bits that you can use from that kit. Um, so I am sad to see that that sort of, you know, diminishing and not being around anymore. Um, however, the new the new kit, it doesn't doesn't hit all the points for me that uh, Sangard should do. I, I, I'm not the biggest fan of the heads. I think that's that's quite, I think that's, uh, the heads and the wings are the two it's things been my main criticism that a lot of people, yeah, yeah a lot of mm. people aren't keen on. I've said this, like, I'm not really fussed on the wings. Like, um, I never had them with wings anyway. I thought they should be sleek without them. Like, I think I made a joke of it saying you wouldn't be in combat with like two giant doors. Or, yeah. you know, like, like, sorry, yeah. mate. Like, I'm, I'm not fussed like, about know, the wings. I like, think my my gripe of them is the the Stormcast Eternal looking heads. But yeah, then yeah. they showed that they have bare head options, which I think were really cool. So yeah. the, bare, the bare head options, I absolutely love. I think they're great. Um, and I've got to I've got to actually uh, just just correct myself on something because I I. I I always use the, the 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 face mask versions from from the original kit, and you did actually get a load of bear heads in there. In that oh, did kit. you? Yeah, you did. Yeah. yeah. Mm. So because I never used them, literally never used them. I used to, I literally checked all my old sprues, and they're still all on the sprues. So I never even realised that. So you do get bear head options in the old kit, um, but the new head bear head options um, uh, look great, and I think I'm going to use those definitely on on non sanguinary guard models. I think, but the sang guard, yeah, like I, I'm slap bang in the middle. I love the fact that we've got new models. I love the fact that there's new things that we can use. Um, I haven't seen them, so I don't know what they're like. Yeah. Obviously, I'm not, I'm not going to reserve final opinion until I've actually had them in hand and then actually see them. Rest assured, though, when we do get our hands on that kit, we'll be doing a full, thorough paint perspective review of that kit. So subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Uh, we'll be doing that as soon as we get our hands on the models. I am going to convert the living hell out of them, though. I've got the whole Blood Angels reliquary at my house of spare parts. <laughs> so I am gonna be, I'm going to be heavily doing stuff to them to give them a look which... I feel that they should have, if that makes sense. And I'm sure a lot of people will do very, like, do all different manner of different things with them, et cetera. Like I think as a, as a core kit, there's a lot that you can do with it. Um, and, and ultimately, you know, it's a brand new kit. It's exciting to get new plastic. I'm not going to trounce that or, or look down upon that. Cause I think it's good when you get new plastic, yeah. you know? So, but more importantly, stuff we have got. Yes. 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 So, uh, should we go through Adam's Astra? Yeah, first? let's do yeah. Adam's Astra first. I think it's great. Uh, thoughts on the model. I like it. I never re the thing I like the old model. The thing that for me that was a that was it was a bit even though it looked like he was doing the same sort of pose that he was doing now. It was obviously very mirrored the pose. Whereas with this one, it's got a bit more movement because of that turn to the left, which I think is quite nice. Um, and also, it, it, it shows motion. He kind of looked like he was just hovering in the old pose a little bit. Same mm. as the same as the old Sanguinor as well. It's like, got a very similar silhouette to the old Sanguinor. Yeah, I think. it has. Yeah, yeah, yeah the, the Sanguinor and, and him are very similar in the, in like in their pose because of the wings. But then, to be perfectly honest, there's only so much you can do with a guy that's got giant wings. You know what I mean? <laughs> like you know, um, and it's actually I, I think from especially from talking to like uh, Ben from the CS team when he made some, some bits and bobs for me, like some sang Sanguinors in, in the past, like getting motion right with wings is actually quite hard yeah. like it's because it, no, the wings aren't flapping so no matter how you pose it it kind of just looks they like look, it's it looks like it's stationary yeah, so it looks static, it's actually it? quite hard to do it you've, um, you've got a siege custom service sculpted astrath haven't you you haven't painted yet yesterday yeah 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 mm. I, I had that made quite a long time ago um but i will eventually get around to be painting i love the irony <laughs> that when that was designed and sculpted for james mm. there was no new astrath model no and so much time has passed since then between the mod it being sat in James's pile of shame, so to speak. I would have thought that would be very high on your list. On, potential. It's yeah. been so long since then that GW have come along and not only released a new one, but yeah. we've painted the yeah. new one. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. yeah. Give I do yours to Adam. He'll paint it yeah, in a I, week. I do you. need to I do need to get, yeah. get that done. Like there's a lot of things. There's a there's a few things in front of, of him on the list, but he will yeah. he will be getting painted. The problem is we keep keep getting so many amazing releases and I keep getting sidetracked by so many things like starting a random chapter or like painting mm. audience or like doing these 
monthly challenges that the podcast has, <laughs> you know, like, so there's, there's a lot of things that do unfortunately distract, but yeah, like he is something that I do want to, I do want to get, get time on the brushes to do. And I think, yeah, like with, with obviously the, new, the release coming out now and obviously with the new codex and all this kind of stuff, like there is a, a fire there to do a Primaris below mm. army. So we'll, we'll, you never know. We'll see. We'll, see. <laughs> well, Adam's absolutely crushed the paint job with this Astarath. Yeah, he killed uh, it. Especially in the sort of limited time frame that we have to do these little mm. previews for uh, for GW. Yeah. So. so Adam painted it in the sort of traditional iconic scheme, uh, which is really great. A, a more desaturated red, so like more of a, a darker red than, than you'd see on normal Blood Angel models. Um, he's a really, really menacing, menacing character. And I think more subdued and desaturated colors just tend to work quite nicely. Is that, is that well. like a death company thing? Cause Mephiston has a similar sort of armor setup, doesn't he? Uh, so that, yeah. So he, so his job in the chapter is mm. at the end of a battle, any death company that are left alive, he kills them. That's his job. Well, isn't, isn't the whole point that they're in the death companies because they're about to, isn't there like a, a, a blood thing with the blood angels? They go a bit mental. So you have the red thirst, which that's it. That's red, red thirst is, is just like, yeah. it's just like aggression while they're fighting. Yeah. But before battle, the sanguinary priests walk through the ranks of blood angels before battle. Yeah. And certain brothers will be like glazed over like their eyes and won't yeah. really respond to very much or whatever pre-battle. So they're pulled out of the, of the ranks and they become death company because they've fallen. The black right. rage is separate to the red first. Yeah. Um, so yeah, his job is literally when, when they've done butchering everything, um, his title is redeemer of the lost. So yeah. obviously they've fallen to the black rage. Any that are left, he then deals with them. So the, the death company that, only get one fight then, do they? Yeah. yeah that's basically what yeah. So uh, dreadnoughts are a bit different. It's a bit difficult for him to, yeah, to chop, chop the head off, <laughs> crazy dreadnought. But but yeah, that some 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 death company. There is a tower on Baal which has got caged like marines. Yeah, um, I think it's called the tower. I'd have to remember the name. Uh, it's called the tower. I think it's the Tower of Lost. And there's basically uh, there, there's death company that are like basically chained up and like yeah. kept, kept there. It could be that it could be. I think that they're like certain specific brothers of the chapter or certain high profile like, like members of the chapter or whatever. Hmm. Um, but yeah, generally speaking, he is he is essentially uh, uh, well, he's the axeman. That's that's what he does. A yeah. lot, lot of effort to yeah. repaint your entire armor just for one fight, isn't it? Spray yeah, gun. Like a, <laughs> Do you reckon they've got like an assembly line, like a like a like an Essex spray yeah. tan booth just for black armor? <laughs> spray tan booth. I'm not yeah. asking James to repaint them. No, yeah. definitely, definitely but not. I, I thought that any blood angel, if they felt that they were about to succumb, they could sort of give him the nod, and he would, without question, just take their heads off. No, it's not. It's not that. So basically, he literally he it's it's always at the end of a battle that he basically kill, kills any death company. Right. Um, so it's only the death company, and not any I, other he doesn't just run around killing killing right. random blood angels. No, I felt like I've been fed false lore from someone. No, somewhere. he he he, he, he <laughs> literally he, that's why he's got the title redeemer because they're already lost. Yeah. So they're they're fallen to that rage. So yeah, he he obviously deals with them because so he just hangs around. Oh no, he gets he gets stuck in, but then at the end of the battle, he just he just anyone goes, left? Anyone left? Anyone yeah. left? <laughs> <laughs> Oi, come here! Where are you going, Trevor? <laughs> Trevor! <laughs> no, <I don't. laughs> is is Astarath himself a, a black rageman, or is he is he a Puritan? I do you know what? That's something that I'm not actually. Does he have to cut on. his own like, head off? No, that's a bit difficult. He's maybe he's for the axe. Like, well, like, you know, have yeah, a go. Like, can't yeah. Maybe he's like <laughs> someone who's like come out the other side. Maybe that was his yeah. like backstory. That's, that's Mephiston. He's he's the only one that's gone, oh, gone through. Sakes, yeah. it's oh, God's sake! Get your law right. The only one. Space toys. God. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, anyway, um, yeah, but Ad's done a phenomenal job. He's painted, as I said, very similar to box art in the sense of colors and tones. Uh, painted it in in quite a short time frame. We did have quite did, a, yeah. quite a short short period of time to do this. So it's great watching him paint it. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> you know, seen it at the start and thinking, how's he going to turn that into what I've seen in the picture? But he's every every model he produces is, is yeah. uh, he's, 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 he's phenomenal, great. absolutely yeah. phenomenal. I really like the wings as well. It's something that I really like about the model. Like the old, um, I like them more seeing them now. Do you know what it doesn't? Uh, this is going back to what we said earlier of like the the images don't convey it quite as it does seeing it in person. The image, the the wings have like a curve to them that kind of mm. isn't represented in yeah. in the photography from from GW Studio. They look a lot more like two dimensional. They look like Kind of like he said, like the big door Just thing. Doors, yeah. <laughs> but seeing them in person, like they are, they are like sort of curved towards towards yes. over his shoulders, like sort of yeah, bit more concave. haunched over. Right. Yeah, they are, I, re I really like them, and I think that like, at first I was like, oh, they're massive. But then, like when you actually look at the size of the model, he, he's he is huge. Yeah, as well. it looks about like, right. He is, yeah. he is, like, I think that pose with framed by those huge black wings. It, it, I think 
I mean, it's quite a menacing sort it's of very figure, menacing, isn't it? Yeah. yeah he's For great, scale's sake, yeah. James, can you just hold up Astarath next to my captain that I painted just so yeah, people can sure, see sort of the rough sort of size just, difference? Just grab it, that. You have to excuse the tactical rocks that uh, Yeah, Astaroth yeah. I mean, on, like, but, um, he, is, he is like massive compared to, compared to like a... And that's like, a captain on a, a massive captain, tactical on rock, a massive bear tactical in mind. Rock, yeah. So it's very cool. He is, is great as well. And he's not for, at full stretch. It's kind of curved model. He's like where he's leaning back to swing the axe without mm. like he's got a bit of a curve on it. But... Yeah, you can see the the curve on those wings is just really, really lovely. Um, but as, on, as I said, like use really nice cold blue tones on the wings as well, just to really give it a bit more of a menacing kind of look. Um, but yeah, the I, I love the fact that his armor is basically like a flayed, flayed flesh. That's that's what yeah, the armor well, I, is. Every time I look at it, it, it just reminds me of that uh, movie Dracula a, long, a while yeah. back. Yeah, yeah. And he's got that you know that like, plate armor, but it's yeah. all kind of like the muscle structure. That's exactly what it is. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's great. It's really good. Uh, and and uh, I'd had some really good choices on stuff like for example like doing the period seals in green as well so that it contrasts the red which I thought was quite nice like mm. um, but yeah just a really really great great use of color um I'd actually asked me because we when we talk about other models in a minute like for the basing we tried to keep the basing kind of like similar to each other so the bit of rock that's on um on Astro's base is he's done it as marble which is very similar to the base that I've done on the Marty so it's like it's um yeah we tried to keep the keep the models kind of similar in that sense. One thing that I thought was interesting actually was that the kit comes with an additional part that isn't seen on the GW box art for that model, and there's a Death Company head on the floor there, Hell yeah. which if I'm not mistaken, Adam Ooh. didn't add. That's actually part of the kit for the basing. Yeah, it's part of the kit. Yeah. yeah. So I don't actually think that's on the GW phones. I, that was a fun I little surprise. Know. I don't. Yeah. I didn't know that's that. A cle- is that a cleaved? It's a head, cleaved head, yeah, mm. cleaved head, yeah. Um, so yeah, but, yeah. Uh, I just, I've just had a double check. It is definitely not on the box art from GW. Yeah. yeah. So that's, what, that's it's good. It's it's nice like that. A little bit of narrative on the base as yeah. well it makes little, makes little sense. A bit of a treat. Yeah. A little it's, treat. There. It's uh, it's it's quite good. It just shows obviously what he does, which is yeah. quite cool. I didn't. Be, I'll be honest. I didn't connect the dots of the little bit of lore there on the base. Yeah. 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 It tells a story. Yeah. George. Very nice. Yeah. The um the, the some of my favorite things like for example like I, I like the fact that the gold is isn't like a really rich gold it's like a more or sort of older gold looking uh, mm. effect that Adam's done on there as well which I think is really nice a bit more of like an aged patina going on yeah, yeah yeah I think it works with the overall if you think, if you had like really bright gold and then the the overall armor was like dark red it would just I, I, it'd be a good color contrast but I think that keeping it all in that vibe, that desaturated sort of more darker vibe just works really well for the model. Is there anything that you're when you get your own one? Is there anything that you're thinking of changing or anything that you'll be doing like you're happy with that you're not going to change? Maybe you thought you were or? I want to paint it just like box art because I like that. But I also would love to paint. I think what I'll do is my one that I had made for me, I'll paint like box art. And then the version of that that I'll do, I'm going to paint jet black. So he's really? like, yeah, I want him to be completely black, like jet blacks. And, I, and just the face plate, be the, or the, just be the face, be like, the cold looking white kind of color that's so kind of like what mm. lamartes looks like in a way almost. yeah yeah i because I, I the thing i've always thought about uh about um Astraf is that yes it makes sense and that he's in different colors because he's not black he's not falling to black rage etc but what I, I think having him in jet black with like the gold trim or maybe even silver trim he would look super menacing i, I, I guess it's kind of like a grim reaper kind yeah. of look especially yeah, yeah. with like an axe sort of stroke scythe type yeah thing. that's a good point actually yes yeah. 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 i'd love like to, I'd, I'd love to see all sort of see angel him. of death kind yeah. of thing i'd love mm. to see him completely in like black armor i think yeah. he'd look amazing um because he could do some fun stuff like the undersuit the rubber undersuit you could highlight that differently so it would read as rubber as opposed to armor like there's loads of cool things you could do with it um but yeah I, i'd love to would you keep it. the wings black if you were doing that <laughs> Maybe not. I'd probably maybe go for a... Because the wings frame him. So, like, I'd probably go for, like, like a really pale, like a grey, maybe. So, it, like, it, you, he stands mm. out more to the to the wings, potentially. Law-wise, law are they just decorative, the wings? Or I, I, I don't... I, don't, I mean, I'm I, sure I, he I doesn't love angels and I know a lot about their background, but I don't know. I think they're decorative. <laughs> I, think, got a jet pack I, think, on, I think they're decorative. You know. They're more decorative Yeah, because he's literally else. got a jump pack on the back yeah. of him. So, you know, the I know only, Sanguinius has the, got wings, obviously. The only... But. Blood Angel to have wings is obviously Sanguinius or in one of the uh, James Swallow books there's a marine which gets a subtle persuasion from Chaos called Archeo who uh, goes after the spirit of Lesto and, subtle and, and persuasion is a nice way of making subtle, your marine sound loyalist little, subtle, isn't it little, subtle little persuasion <laughs> um, and um, Cheeky nod. remains loyal but he, grow, he spouts wings he's like yeah he basically thinks he's, he's Sanguinius reborn basically in one of the James Swallow early books but yeah th- they're the only two Blood Angels to ever have wings that are real if that makes mm, sense that's fair. um so yeah i'd um not i don't plan on not putting the wings on mine but i'll be curious when i'm putting it together just to see what it looks like without them for argument's sake yeah yeah, yeah. definitely definitely yeah i think covering over the bit where the wings join might be a bit difficult we might have to find yeah that's to cover true over well you could it, probably but... use just like a normal jump pack i suppose yeah you could, could yeah, yeah you could just use one of the i other think with the, with the wings it gives him that sort of 
sort of bigger presence on yeah. battlefield. And he, yeah, yeah, 100%. Very, sort 100%. Of very slim figure, isn't he, yeah. in the in, pose in, that he's in? Interesting thing about him, he and the new Sanguinor are the only two Primaris that have a single thruster new pack. Yeah, I noticed that. So mm. it's uh, I, I've I, seen people do conversions and stuff before with a single thruster pack. Is that a third party part? No, it's the Sanguinary Guard jump pack. That's yeah. the Sanguinary Guard jump pack. I love that gotcha. jump pack. It's one of yeah. my favourite jump packs. The new ones have got the single jet as well. The, I don't know. Yeah, they've got the same one. Or they're yeah, very yeah. similar to one to him. But yeah, yeah. but it's just... It's so like, they'll, they'll be Primaris available. So yeah, mm. they're, they're, they're mar essentially they are Mark IV Maximus pattern jump packs from the Heresy. That's what they are. They're the Maximus style uh, jump pack. Um, so, so yeah, but uh, yeah, I love them. I think they're great, especially for like troops that are designed to be in combat. This is why I don't like the wings on Sangard because like, as I said, oh, you know, what? I stand, I stand corrected. Actually, I've just had a look at the Sangard and they've got, uh, they've got the normal. Are they got so, the normal. Yeah. They got the normal. Packs. Well, twin yeah. jet type ones. Yeah, yeah. Oh, I thought yeah. they had singles. Now oh, they've got the normal okay. submarine ones. Oh, yeah. fair enough. It's same same things Dante's got. Oh yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah. 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 I'll probably put single pack on them because I just I want them to be super sleek and like mm. I don't want them to have. And they look better. I, I love the single packs. Though, I think they uh, they're great. The single. Yeah, packs. I do like them as well. Yeah. The uh, the other thing that I'll be interested to see on Astarath is I know the kit doesn't quite allow for it, um, but it looks like a relatively easy conversion to separate the arms enough that you could repose them and sort of pull yeah, the axe down a little bit. Yeah, definitely. I, I'm not, it might be one of those things where like in my head it will look better than it will in reality, if that makes yeah. sense. But I'm going to try and just pull the axe down a little bit um, yeah. to see if that aesthetic drives me a little bit better. It might yeah. not. I might why be do wrong you on that. Why do you want, just for... Yeah, I think it would be would nice. Would that not cover his face a bit too much? I actually think the opposite, because I think if you go like eye level with the model, mm. the sort of pommel of his axe is kind of like obscuring his face just a gotcha. little bit. Yeah, yeah. It's only yeah. when you view the model side on that you've got a nice view of his head. So I would actually be curious if I can sort of pull it down a little bit. It might look weird. I might yeah. be wrong. But equally, the... I know it's like technically correct and like I'm I know, not bothered I know about what that. You're going to say. But <laughs> looking at a shoulder pad upside down looks weird to me as well. Yeah, I don't yeah. know why. But it always does, doesn't it? Yeah, yeah. It, it will do. I mean, that yeah. I mean that is what it it looks like. You know, mm. I mean, like yeah. But, I um, mean, it is what it is. I'm not yeah. saying it's like <laughs> it's supposed to be any other way. But it just it you never see it, do you? So it just looks no, odd. Yeah. Just by the fact of when do you ever see that? You yeah, know what yeah. I mean? no, definitely. If you're listening to this podcast, there's a good chance that you're looking to take miniature painting more seriously and improve your skills. We're asked all the time by listeners of this podcast how you can paint like our artists here at Siege, and now you can learn how with our Siege Studios painting and sculpting classes. We teach a variety of fundamental and advanced techniques that are integral to the painting methodologies that we use here at Siege. Our day and weekend classes have been developed over eight years of teaching experience developing painters from all skill levels in venues across the UK. You'll walk away with practical skills and techniques that you can take away and nurture so you can start seeing better results and grow as a painter. To book tickets to your local venue now before they sell out, head to the link in this episode's description or go to siegestudios.co.uk forward slash shop. So obviously I had done Astrath. You had some fun with the new upgrade spree. Yes. Tell us about that. Uh, well, I was very, very excited for the upgrade spree, first of mm. all, because... Blood Angels, I would say, had one of the lesser interesting ones to be uh, diplomatic about it. The Primaris, Primaris one. Yeah. was not was not the best. Yeah. Wasn't the best. And also, I personally really, really like the look of transfers on shoulder pads. So I've never, when I've done any models, really done the like sculpted ones that you get yeah. in the upgrade packs. Therefore, those upgrade sprues had next to zero value for me because the whole reason you bought it more or less was for the shoulder pads, right? Yeah. Which I've never really had much of use for. Um, the new one is very geared around the new shoulder pads as well. But in addition to that, you've got loads of like actually Blood Angels specific flavored heads, um, like little trinkets and whatnot. Some there's like the Eviscerator axe as well, with some chain axes and things, uh, mm. chain swords. Sorry, um, so some really really cool parts. So that was the thing that I was excited for the most. And as some of the regular viewers of the podcast may know, I've been very very slowly shipping away at a Primaris Blood Angels army, which I started at the beginning of this year. Mm. So I already had a Blood Angels captain uh, assembled, but not yet primed or anything, uh, like sort of ready to go. That was going to be my next project as my reward for finishing the Stone Guard veterans that I'd done. I was going to be doing him alongside some other models. Um, but then this release sort of came along <laughs> and just landed mm. perfectly. So I was like, hang on a minute, I'm going to get the scalpel back out. Started hacking some of the uh, some of the bits off of my uh, existing Space Marine captains. So this is the one from the Company Heroes box, the sort of newer release. 
Um, but I've made some small tweaks, uh, mainly on the cloth, uh, the sort of loin cloth. I've taken off the little sort of trinket thing that's hanging there. And there is a perfect little blood drop uh, sort of bit of detail that fits really, really nicely onto mm. that. I did basically no like conversion. It was almost just like a straight swap. And mm -hmm. um, because the way that kit goes together, that part originally on the original kit is like separate to the loincloth. So you can just add that one and just swap it straight on. Really, really easy. Uh, additionally, I done the tilt shield uh, on the chest uh, with like the blood damage specific one. It's got some iconography on there, which I thought was quite cool. Um, I could have done a plain one and just put a transfer on it, but mm. I thought, give me a little bit of bling. Um, Can't be a blood angel without a bit of bling. No, exactly. Like trinkets. Uh, and then, of course, I've used my favorite of the new blood angels heads from the upgrade sprue. We have a small little tweak because I wanted to be faithful to the original sort of build that I'd done for this model, which was using the uh, head from the Imperium magazine exclusive captain uh, from a couple of years back, which has this cool like halo uh, yeah, on top of his head. Yeah, laurel. It's amazing. Yeah. Um, and I wanted to keep that, so I took that off of uh, the Imperium Captain and I just bonked it onto the new Blood Angels one, which I thought was a nice way to sort of tie that in together. Yeah, I think it made him nice just like nod. a little bit extra special as a captain because yeah. odds are I'll probably use that head again elsewhere on mm. my Marines. And because they won't have that uh, sort of laurel on the head, yeah. it'll make them it'll look different anyway. Yeah, look yeah. a little bit more different. Um, the, the heads on the upgrade sprue are absolutely They are amazing. phenomenal. They yeah, are they're like spectacular. amazing. Um, it's, it's, people are buying the set just for the upgrade spree. It's honestly <laughs> the upgrade spree is great. You get some amazing swords on there. Like I was astonished just, that you like, get four in the box. I don't know why. I guess it makes sense because the because you got a lot. The, you got a lot of incessors in there. It's the shoulder pad, so I get. Yeah, yeah. I totally get why they've done it. I'm, I'm glad they've done it. Don't yeah. get me wrong. It's, it's amazing. But uh, I didn't. I didn't think initially when seeing the box because I thought you. I just presumed you get like two maybe or something like that. Well, normally, you get loads. What, yeah. what do you get in an upgrade pack? Is it two sprues? Two isn't sprues. It? Two yeah. little sprues. So yeah. That's, that's yeah. two packs, isn't it? Two complete packs in there. Then. Yeah, and yeah. they're they're not cheap on their own. So no, there's quite so. a bit of quite a bit of value in yeah. there. I'd say. Um, yeah, absolutely love the the new parts and the new blood and heads especially. Joy to paint, like I must say. Um, absolutely loved painting the new faces. They're they're absolutely phenomenal to paint. Um, especially because they've got the new fangs now. The blood mm. I am quite glad of that, actually. It's, yeah. it's quite good. I think some of the earlier heads looked a little bit comical, like in some of the some of the earlier fanged heads, but these ones just look a bit more, I don't know, not, not realistic, because obviously vampires aren't real, thank God, but like, but they just look... They look fitting. They look, they look they, fitting yeah, yeah, to the look, models. That they makes look sense. Blood yeah, angel. Yeah, yeah. It's not like super over yeah. the top and like cartoony either. It's like a normal yeah. blood angel mm. Do you Do you think head, though, that might have been fangs. due to... Sculpting techniques or I don't processing I don't know like there was the, the the there was a Horus Heresy there's a Horus Heresy um uh oh Zephon Zephon yeah. yeah and his head is very much like Count Dracula like a one to something like yeah, yeah. it's very much yeah. like it's very much got the teeth and fangs in a, in a bit more of a comical it looks a bit more comical like in the sense yeah. of the sculpt Whereas, and that's a fairly recent release as well in the grand yeah, scheme of I things. Yeah, I mean, yeah, I, I don't know when ago. it was. It's only a couple of years ago. Yeah, when, the when, it, when it dropped. came out, but yeah. when it was sculpted, sculpted. we don't, don't yeah, know. That's true. Yeah. That's true. Yeah, I mean, um, but these ones are great. They're really, really cool. They look super. They look super aggressive, and um, and uh, and yeah, just 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 really fitting with the with the chapter basically. So there's loads of awesome bits in there. I'm really looking yeah. forward to um, mm. starting to use it on the actual like marines like yeah. in my army, so to speak. Yeah, because um, there's some really really cool parts in there, and I think. Just adding some little bits of flavor and stuff. It's a nice way of separating the models and making them look more specific to a chapter, yeah. isn't it? So, yeah, yeah, yeah really look, great. look really good. Yeah, excellent paint job. Oh, Amazing. thank you. Yeah, yeah. The absolutely, paint, you absolutely smashed it. I saw your Instagram post. It popped up. I think it was, was it, just, uh, it was on the Saturday. Yeah, yeah. Saturday. it was yeah. on the weekend while I was painting. I thought, I hate him. <laughs> <laughs> look at this. It's like you've got a nice shot of his face there. And I thought, how are you? That's impossible. He's, he's got to have done something in. Uh, post product production pictures in there. He's, <laughs> I just have to. I hate him. I'll have to talk to him on Tuesday when I see him. <laughs> I hate well, you. I hate you. <laughs> and then, and then uh, I want to say thank you, but also. <laughs> and then, like, I mean, you let me have a look at it. Uh, at Friday? Was yeah. it Friday? Was, yeah, yeah. It must have been Friday. Yeah, yeah. It was Friday. Yeah. Uh, in person, it's just even more ridiculous. So yeah. Oh, it's, thank it's, you kindly. It's, yeah, it's awesome. Yeah. Yeah. No, so I, it's like something to sort of work towards you know i had really good fun painting him um, it looks I think, like he had, yeah like yeah you can tell it's yeah. one of those paint jobs where like you just keep going and going and going yeah. until someone know, forces you thing. to stop don't yeah. you which with this was of course the the nda date for the release yeah. so yeah. there is that and the more i looked at it the more sort of details i could pick out like you know you got the you got the yellow shoulder pads with the red vertical stripe down the middle it's perfect yeah it's really good yes yeah, it's, it's so nice and yeah if you, if you don't Thank look you. sort of carefully you'll miss those because they're underneath like the you know the the transfers and the other, you know, the other sculpted parts on the on the on the shoulder pads there. 
and the purple cape and the purple plasma. Yeah, the dark, I, like, I like the, the dark, purple plasma. It, it, yeah. Well, yeah. Yeah, yeah, I was a bit undecided on the purple plasma actually while I was painting it because it was I was really really struggling to get the right amount of contrast to make the plasma look like it was glowing well, the thing while is, still yeah. making it look purple because it was getting very very white very quickly. Yeah. So I did I did I did repaint that two or three times to get it to where it is. Yeah, I mean yeah. you're sa you're safe with the color because it's a harmonious color of red, so you should you 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 you're good with it. I mean you could have gone oh, you could have gone turquoise or green, but I think the purple it's 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 not so overstated that it takes away from yeah. the model. And I think sometimes when you've got like a bright blue glow or bright green glow, it's because it's the direct complement, it, 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 like the green it, it, mm -hmm. and also blue being primary, but it just, it takes away from, it takes away from it too much sometimes. So it's nice and subtle, which I really like. Yeah, cheers. I was um, a bit undecided as well, because like the, when you look at a lot of other people's Blood Angels captains, I was particularly looking at like, you know, some past paint jobs like Darren Latham and looking at like some of the limited Primaris GW uh, paint jobs that they've done from the heavy metal team. Mm. Just looking for some inspiration online and stuff. I was really unsure on like colors to use for particularly, I, I was, I don't love doing black cloth personally, because I think it can look a little bit bland sometimes. Flat. Yeah. yeah. And I don't want it to be like, because I've got the black um, edging of the shoulder pads, like the trim mm. uh, on the rest of my force, not on the captain because of the color scheme, but on the rest of my force, I didn't want to have like loads and loads of black details going on. Um, so I definitely wanted to do purple on the back. I was pretty confident with that. But when it came to the inside, um, where I've done the sort of cream color, um, I went a little bit back and forth on there because I was unsure if like, should I do the loincloth a different color? Mm. Should I do the inside of the cape a different color? Should I do them both the same? And then also in addition to that, you've got the sort of rope that goes around his chest and I wasn't sure what color to do that. So at one point it was mm. white, then it was black, then it was red. Then I was like <laughs> overcomplicating it a little bit. Um, yeah. What color did going, you go for on the rope again? I can't remember. I ended up going for the just sort of a, cream rope yeah, color that matches yeah, yeah, yeah. matches the rest of it which i was mm. actually really really pleased with i think it look, look, mm. it ties everything together quite nicely yeah, i think yeah. it was one of those things where do it all the same or yeah, do yeah. none of it the same um, yeah, no, i wasn't yeah. really sure where to land on that but um, i'm pretty I pleased with it, that uh, it all works it all ties together well yeah, like yeah. The, you know like the the, the uh, lanyard and the, the loincloth lanyard. Lanyard. <laughs> that's what it is isn't it a lanyard my, yeah, it is yeah. <laughs> it's a rope yeah it doesn't sound very good does it <laughs> put the old ceremonial rope on <laughs> But no, it, it all it all sort of ties the bottom half with the top. Yeah. yeah, it was the nice part about doing. I'd previously done the Stone Guard veterans, and yes. they were like my training ground for getting the armor scheme like dialed in, mm. and my process and my recipe and whatnot. Yeah, and because I'd not only dialed that in on one model, but doing it across a whole squad of five. Like even when I was doing my Stone Guard vets, I found the fifth one much much easier than the first. Yeah. Mm. So going into this, I it was nice knowing that the main focal point, obviously, being the red armor. It was like pre-decided for me. I already knew what I was doing with that and mm. I was pretty confident and happy with those choices. Mm. So it gave me like more uh, mental bandwidth to start thinking about other choices other like things, the, yeah. the plasma and the cloth and things like that. So that was nice and refreshing because normally when I'm painting character models, you're kind of going in like completely blind and you're kind of doing everything from scratch, if that makes sense. Yeah, it's good because you don't, the Stern Guard have so much detail on them that you can transfer directly onto the captain. A lot of things that you've learned and experienced on the Stern Guard. If you'd maybe done intercessors first, Making all those decisions on a model that's way more detailed yeah. becomes a lot more bit up, more more uphill. More involved. It's, it sped up the process as well because the only thing that I really went back and forth on was, like I said, the plasma and the sort of rope. And other than that, everything was pretty much just sort of, well, that's the color I did on my stone guard, so I'll just use the same recipe mm. for that. Yeah. And it, it came together nicely. It made things a lot quicker than I was expecting. I didn't realize how much time you waste just going back and forth on decisions like that, especially when you paint something and you realize you paint it fully. Then yeah. after you realize you don't like it, you've got to mm. redo it. Yeah. Yeah. So. Story of my life. <laughs> <laughs> if you enjoy listening to these podcast episodes every single week, I'd like to ask that you could please do us one small, tiny favor in return and hit that subscribe button on YouTube or the follow button on your podcast app. It takes only two seconds and it really, really helps us out. And it allows us to bring you these episodes for free every single week. Thank you so much. Back to the episode. Okay, James, well, you painted Lamartis, of course. Yeah. I Walk had... us through it. All right, pull up a sandbag, everyone. Here we go. <laughs> no, I'll try and keep it as, as, as brief as possible. Uh, yeah, I absolutely loved this model from the moment I saw it. Um, super aggressive. Uh, his backstory is great, uh, like him as a character. I know that people are going, how could you make him Primaris when he's a rage fueled monster? He does have periods of time where he becomes more, it, the, the rage recedes, but... But, what do you want to um, do? Like, I'm I'm not super familiar with the law of the characters. Do you want to do like a little brief? Overview? Yeah. Why doesn't he chop his head off? Because <laughs> I mean, so the Martes as a character is an interesting. I thought they get one fight. Yeah. yeah no, As but, this law's falling to pieces. I don't know what's going on? Yeah. So he's he is essentially almost like a beacon for the Death Company. So mm. the way that the way that it works is he 
he is a, a death company chaplain. That's what he is. Um, he has periods of where he, he succumbs to black rage. Um, and, but what happens is a lot of the death company, for some reason, they are able to follow and be led by him. So he is like the Pied Piper. Yeah. And the company of the rats. Let's put it that way. That's wow. the best way for me to explain and it. And conveniently, at the, end of an, uh, at the end of a battle, conveniently, he hands Astorath oh. a 20 pound note. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Sorry, mate. I'm, uh, I'm going. Yeah. It's uh, all right. I'm fine yeah. now. So he's, um, he's a really interesting character. Um, so because he has those periods of lucid, uh, like the, the awake it returns to normality to an extent, you know, it, 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 yeah. But amazing character. Really, really Classic good. Classic normal space vampire. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Perfectly like, normal. Like, like all the other space vampires that there are out there. But um, <laughs> yeah. Um, <laughs> but uh, yeah, so I love the model when I saw it. Um, um, uh, I'm a big fan of the old OG model. Um, I've painted one of those. I've got one of those. That I, I really enjoyed painting, um, and it's a metal one, which is quite nice to paint. So, which was good. Um, but was the, that was that a fine cast one? Then I didn't realize that. So oh, post, the post old, metal, obviously. The old Lamartis came out in. Mm. Fine I didn't know cast. it was that old. Yeah, yeah, it came out in metal and came out in fine cast. So yeah, you get two versions of him. Um, but yeah, the, the, I, I absolutely fell in love with the model, and, and like for me, obviously, it's my favorite chapter. So very biased to the model, but like. I think it's I think he's had the biggest glow up of all of them. I, I to love, be fair. I, yeah. yeah, I know yeah. a lot of people were saying about the, the the. There's this thing about the the head with like the 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 rebreather on the face, and it looks like a certain thing or whatever, blah blah. But like, I, I genuinely, genuinely like the redesign of him massively. I think it's very mm. fitting for his character. I think the the sort of the glow up that he's got. Is it the Mad Max? The, the, kind of, yeah. the, the old guy in Mad Max. <laughs> so like, you, yeah. you can read a lot of comments online about what people think it looks That's like. That's what but, I can think. But of. like, but. I, I I really really liked it a lot from when I saw it and um and yeah for, for like it's the first things first is the base I've got to, like irrelevant in the model I know the model is the thing we're going to talk about but the base is amazing like it's a character model which for once doesn't just have like a detail on the base it is a fully mm. detailed like display base essentially yeah. that's what it is um like with inscribed words you've got like sanguineous blood angels Baal, all written on the base like in lovely writing and stuff and you can spend loads of time adding interest to those those things um obviously on the box art it's painted as like a marble staircase which i've, I've done a similar sort of thing um really really enjoyed doing that I obviously had a chance to just just try something a bit different and I, i've done marble a few times before but not to kind of like look like this and and i've really really enjoyed painting it and doing it um i think it was just a good Thing to do is a paint a natural element which is a bit different from painting like armor or gems or mm. metallic or was that a struggle for you painting that texture yeah, you you done yeah it was it was really it, you know what like it's not something i'm super super confident on when i first approached it. i've only done it once or twice before and because like, i i only recently done marble for the first time with a uh, custom service empress champion that it's i not painted. the older uh, dried out wet wipe everyone's using no it? no I that's, that's what i did so <laughs> that's what i did for I, mine yeah I, it worked I, really well i literally blocked it in a solid color um and then i uh, basically started painting on some semi-opaque veins onto there hmm. then done because marble is all about layers like yeah. in, in real in real, real marble it's got loads of layers obviously within it obviously it's formed through pressure obviously that's what creates obviously all those all that, that, that that look um, so just done loads of mar like vein work on it glazed the living hell out of it softened it right down then I got some different tones obviously it's like a neutral thing but I wanted it to look even though the model is very cold in temperature because black armored blue highlights, yeah. it's a bit of splash of heat, obviously with the reds and like some of the rich golds and things like that. Um, so I, I wanted, I wanted the base to be, to mirror the, to the temperature and the feel of the model as well. I didn't want the base to be really hot or warm in temperature. So mm. I use a lot of neutral tones for like, for glazes. So I used, um, I used some, uh, I actually used sepia. I used Reichland flesh shade. I used, um, uh, a little bit of your favorite Steel Legion Drab. Yeah, um, boy. I use uh, I use Dragon Off Nightshade as well. I put, I put some blue some blue tints in there as well because when you when you see marble, whether it's flooring or whether it's like a bit of furniture or whatever it is that you see that's got a marble look or marble feel, like when you really study it, and I'm one for when I go around museums. I've been to a few museums in London and stuff, and like people will be like taking photos of the walls or the paintings or whatever. And I'm like, holy crap, look at that floor. Like, you know, <laughs> photographing, photographing yeah, the floor yeah. for reference. Lamartis like, is actually walking through the flooring department of B&Q. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 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 Um, so, so I, I, I really enjoyed that. And I think from doing a few, few mm. goes at doing marble, this is probably, in my opinion, the best marble I've done. And I really, enjoy, it looks I'm, great. I really enjoyed it. Probably, doing it. it probably helps. This is not to detract from your paint job, but obviously it helps when something is sculpted as marble. Yeah. It helps sort of bring the best out of the paint job. If you get what yeah, I mean? Yeah. yeah. It, it can be quite it, hard. It sells to, it more as the thing. Yeah. It can be quite yeah. hard to get like just a sheet of plastic card and yeah. go, it's marble and yeah. then make it happen. Yeah. hundred percent. Yeah. It really, it really helped doing that. And I think some of the interesting stuff is like where you've got, the, the base is made of several components. It's actually, it's not just one thing. So when you build it, you've got various parts that go together to obviously make the base. Um, 
like adding shadow to the overhang of the step and making the, the, the vein work curl over the overhang because obviously mm. marble is carved and that's how they do it. Yeah. So that pattern would continue around the curve and stuff like that. So like it does, in, it does thought provoke quite a lot when it comes yeah. to actually painting it, which I thought was quite fun. Um, but yeah, as for him, um, Pose is amazing. Like uh, the art, the first images of it when I saw it, obviously I was super biased. Like, wow, it's a blood angel model. It's great, etc. But then when you really start studying it, like you don't really notice like the overall aggression of the pose and like the intent in the in the pose, which I think is really, really conveyed really well when you see it in hand. Um, uh, again, favorite details on it, like for me, uh, the, the, I absolutely love the head. I think the head, I painted that separately and I really enjoyed enjoyed painting that. Um, like the jump pack's quite cool. It's one of the standard sort of like Primaris jump packs, which is quite cool, but- It's got some extra um, bling on the top of there it's though, got, it? Yeah, it's got like a halo on there as well, which is quite nice. That's quite is that cool. like a separate piece? Is it like a standard no, jump pack? It's, or? It's, 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 this is part of the kit and then you've got the, the Def Company. Oh, I meant in the sense, sorry, I meant in the sense of on the sprue, is that like a bit that you stick no, on to no, just a regular part, one? Part or is it like part, ingrained it's, in it? It's part of it. So it's part where it goes together and it's it's part of it um but you've got the deaf company cross sort of skulls and and uh cross cross oh, nice. bones and skull on the back oh so it's a completely nice. unique backpack it's a com- then. It's yeah, a, yeah. It's, it is a unique backpack uh, um which is which is quite nice um conveniently something i discovered through painting it he has nine ball diamonds as in blood drops all over him which is the same as the chapter number which is quite cool so they've actually thought about that and Nerd. Given, him, given him nine <laughs> nine blood drops which is quite this cool this is um this throws me back to i've had a yeah. few people point out that in the scale model community they have a word for people like this yeah. so it's, they call them rivet counters yeah so oh, people, who's, ball, people ball diamond counter well, yeah. people, people who look at like a spitfire <laughs> model and they're yeah. like well, actually technically i think you'll find that that armor it's, panel it's had 11 rivets, rivets. Yeah. Yeah. yeah i i, yeah. I it's just, I thought it was a nice little thing. It's only, it's only because when I was painting the painting the gems, I was like, I was counted how many I'd done, and I realised I've missed one. I was like, oh, there's eight. Oh no, it's nine. Oh, it's nine, and that's kind of yeah. what happened. But um, but yeah, they've given him a new gun, so they've given him uh the similar gun to what Chaplin's have, which is quite cool. Um, so yeah, I didn't from the box art images, I wasn't too sure. There's like a four grip on the on the pistol. I wasn't too sure what colour that was. So um, I've painted it black, but I'm not sure what colour it is on the box art. But I thought black was quite nice. It kind of marries the rest of the armour, contrasts the gold quite nicely. Um, uh, yeah, it was, it was, it was a really, really fun model to paint. Um, bone is something that I'm not very, very confident on in, in from past stuff that I painted. And I actually really put some thought into recipe and, and way to do this. So I, I think this is probably, in my opinion, some of the best, best bone I've done. Oh, you totally I mean, nailed it. It looks yeah, fantastic. Um, it's know, a really nice sort of like gray to saturated tone, but it was also like really, really bright up to white in the, yeah, in I, the I, highlights as well. It's nice as... I, Bone can kind of go one of two ways, can't it? You kind of got that like grey to white, or you've got that like warm yellowish sort of mm. tone to brown. It was, brown. It was yeah. really. I didn't want it to because I because obviously the model's really cold in, in the feel, obviously with the black armor, blue highlights, etc. Like I didn't, I wanted, I didn't want the bone to be warm and then take away from the red the, from the red parts because I wanted all the warmth to come purely from focus the eye on the gems focus the eye on the, on the knee pad the shoulder pad that's got the the, the, the chapter symbol on it etc I'm guessing that's so, your retro blood red on the shoulder blood pad blood red for the knee pad and for the it's shoulder pads yeah cool. uh, it's like super vibrant 20 year contrast old paint. 20 year old paint it's mm. uh, super smooth which is again not with, done with a brush it's done with an airbrush mm. um, you know so it goes on lovely and smooth um, but yeah, I wanted a really rich, uh, rich red, which obviously I use blood red for that. Um, and then, um, and then, and then, yeah, like I, overall, do you know, I, I spoke to you about this obviously during the painting process, like the base is really interesting and I'm sorry to touch on it again, but like you've got this, this side here to the back, um, on the back of the model. So you've got this part here, which is just obviously like the perimeter or the edge of the edge of the, uh, the, the, the back. I, I I painted it the same color as a marble and I was contemplating doing all marble veining down here, but it doesn't really make sense to have like It's like a cutaway, isn't it? It's a cutaway, yeah. yes, exactly. It's almost the cake from, yeah. from previous. <laughs> well, actually, <laughs> it if, like, <laughs> if I was going to be true to my cake law, mm. I would say... Is that canon? Is that... Yeah. I, would, <laughs> I would say GW uh, did the cake law in their box art because they painted it as grey, yeah. but I don't think they'd done the marble texture on it. So right. it's like a grey cutaway. Yeah, I... I, I just literally done like one of the uh i'm not i'm dreading painting that right because i'm gonna do steel legion drab base rooms obviously and then it's gonna have like another base room above it it's gonna look mental it's yeah it's insane yeah so so that's i'm doomed to fail with that one i think that's why you paint black base rooms yeah. uh, so, so so um so yeah so I, I i literally was like right well i'm just gonna paint it black um and then it kind of looks like a lot of those you know you the forge world character series where they have the display bases and then the, like, where it cuts off they just paint it black yeah i done exactly the same because i was just like kind of works it looks a bit strange from the front i suppose because obviously 
it's still a cutaway, but then you've got this. I got, think it makes per total sense. I weren't too sure what to do. And I, I messaged you a few times about it. Mm. I was like, oh, should I leave it gray or do marble or do, should I just do it as a cutaway or whatever? And then, yeah, in the end, I just thought, oh, look, yeah, I'll just do it as a cutaway. It'd be quite nice time. for other, ke- like, like that sort of particular base part there attached to it, obviously your gaming base. Be quite nice to have those as an additional thing on the sprues. Yeah. For other characters, just as as an additional thing, like you don't have to use that. No, but if he's if he's if your character if the character's in the right pose or you know pose on a tactical rock, but you've got like a little marble staircase yeah. molded in there, yeah, and yeah. you prefer that. I'd love that. If that, that. They've Great. done. Um, I'd love that if I, that. I don't remember if they've done it for forty k or not. I know they definitely at the very least used to do it for Age of Sigmar. They have like some hero bases that you could buy. Like yeah. a set of yeah, like sort of different stuff, kind of like that. Especially if you wanted to to display them all and you've got like a set of characters like that and they've all got those sort of marbled yeah. bases that you can put them on but it, it ties everything together doesn't it yeah. what, what are your options if you don't want to use the base that he comes with because yeah. I possibly won't just to make it time with my army he's kind of stepping how down, does the sculpt of the model interact with the base itself is it is the model like is it? It's not one of those where like the foot is part of the base, is it? So, no, the foot's not part of the base. The, the the feet sink into. It's got. It's really cleverly designed. Actually, you've got two recesses with the foot, the the out the footprint essentially, and it just slots straight into there. Um, you'll be fine with the front foot. So the front foot's quite flat, which is quite mm. nice. So it, it goes on. It goes on quite nice on the on on the on. on it's quite flat, but it's actually the rear foot because what it shows is when he's landed, and he's crushed he's the marble. Gone the it's gone through yeah. it. So the back foot is actually a, quite an acute. Ang- like quite a sharp angle so you'll probably need to wedge something underneath the back for yeah, a bit of slate a bit sense. of cork mm. or cork is it, bark is it fully like. detailed under there or is it sort of missing what, some of the, the sculpted details the, 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 the his, foot. his foot I, do you know what I can't remember if his foot I don't think it's got the mag, mag tread on the underneath okay. the, so I might the, have to yeah. put like a rock or something behind it yeah. just to mm. sort of hide something like you that might need yeah. to, but it's a full sculpted foot like it's a full like but where it's in the actual base it's yeah, a full, yeah. full leg and full foot all the detail of the leg and foot is there the soles it doesn't have the um, That's know, fair. I don't think it's got the mag tread on the yeah because I would imagine that it'd be quite difficult to tie that in with the sort of uh, sort of general army there are people have got you know just normal Dry brush dirt and well, plants conveniently and you have like got like a five mil, of, five mil, <laughs> five mil of like of like put a tuft on it quick. Build, build. I, I yeah. actually did, yeah. So <laughs> I actually, I little, actually put some yeah. tiny little tufts on the front just to sh- to show that. Again, add a bit of warmth to the base yeah. with, with that green. That's it doesn't on look, there. it doesn't look too difficult to. No, it, no. I, I think we. So I said this when we had a conversation about the, the stuff. I think you can. He In does, the same way that you could take Astaroth and cut him off of that and put him on something else. Yeah, 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 good, yeah, yeah, hundred percent. Like, um, yeah, but overall, no. Like, I just, yeah, I had an an, an absolutely mega time painting it, and um, you know, and and the time frame was tight. Like, it's not there are things on it that I'm I want to re- revisit and have a look at, mm. etc. Like, I'm not like hundred percent on it, but like, um, but yeah, I was really happy with the time frame and, and, and where I got it to. You know, like, there was. I said to you, like, I think it was supposed to come in at the beginning of the week and then, like, it ended up coming in on a little Friday. Bit. So, yeah, yeah like, um, but, uh, but, but it was worth it. But it was worth it. Yeah. yeah it was, we all, we all had some late nights painting these. Yeah, <laughs> it was. Yeah. There was quite a few late nights and early mornings. But, um, but no, it was really, it was really good. And, um, yeah, I'm, I'm over the moon with it. Like, uh, I just, I absolutely, I, I, I super enjoyed painting it. So, yeah. Sweet. Okay, with all that in mind then, James, are you perhaps itching to start a Primaris Blood Angels army? So we had a bank holiday weekend. Um, I might have made a few models. <laughs> <laughs> so yes is the answer to yeah. that So one. let's just get this straight, mm-hmm. right? So the bet was that James would have, he said, his own words, he's not yeah. putting words in his mouth, he said that he would have his Mordian Iron Guard mm-hmm. army. Finished by June. Finished by June. 2025. Oh, ahead, <laughs> ahead of my Blood Angels army. Yeah. Which we all knew wasn't going to happen. No. But I've still got to, tw- I've still got to 2025 and you're only going to be painted. You have seven, seven models. You by said June, June this year. 2025. You didn't read the small print. By, by, um, <laughs> by, uh, by, by June 2025, if you've painted seven models in eight months, I reckon then we'll... Joke's I'll, on you. I've painted six models. Oh, even worse. <laughs> even worse. Six models. No, because you test model. Yeah, I'm not counting that. Oh, yeah. okay. Well, okay. I pick and choose whether I count oh, that, but whether it's convenient I was trying to help yeah. you there yeah. by giving you the test model. On that, oh, no. uh, hang on. So you said you was going to have that finished by June, which obviously you didn't. Yeah. Then failed. you diverted and started a whole homebrew chapter called the Exemplars of Siege, which yeah. looks sick. Fair enough. Then you've gone down the rabbit hole of doing an army of that instead of doing your Mordians. And now the Blood Angels come along and oh, lo and behold... 
back seat, please. I am. Yeah. I am. Join the, the queue. proverbial butterfly. But I. But I absolutely. Uh, I will get them audience done. And um, at some point in the next at some point, yeah, whenever. I am going to do them because I, I. I really absolutely love the models and love the OG sort of guards. But so. you're going to do blood angels. But I'm going to do a blood angels. Who's asking? He was asking about Talon Desert Raiders over the... I'm sure he was like, talking talk about Talon Desert yeah, Raiders on to my friend Sunday Sam about He's a nightmare. Yeah. He's yeah, a nightmare. Like, yeah. Thought, yeah, that'll be the next thing. Yeah. 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 Look, okay, I like to spice it up. All right, okay, so... Yeah, there's no did, point did, painting did, the same things over and over, is yeah, there? Yeah, exactly, yeah. yeah. You know? Did you or did you not pre-order one of these boxes? Yes, I did. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I did. Yeah, because I want a metric ton of Death Company. So, uh, so yeah. Um, nice. Yeah. Okay. Question of the week time. Thank you everyone for submitting your questions for question of the week. If you have a question that you'd like us to answer in this segment on future episode of the podcast, please do leave your comments down below in YouTube. And we will answer them for you. Uh, this week we have a question from Pop Clotter who says, uh, it may be that I'm not used to doing the brushing motions, but I experience fatigue and sometimes pain in my painting hand. Do you have any advice for good techniques to avoid this? Brush I experience this a lot actually, and it's not, pain in my wrist it's i <laughs> i have a tendency to as i get more and more in, like intense on detail i end up sort of uh, accumulating this death grip on my paintbrush like the black rain and i squeeze like <laughs> <laughs> i start squeezing like harder and harder and harder and i actually have this sort of like callus that's now why? grown on my fingertip why from why do you do that of this. well i don't know do you think it makes you paint better or no faster? i wish i didn't do it because it bloody hurts yeah. but <laughs> <laughs> I, uh, yeah well i suppose take regular bra breaks I don't know. I think it's a combination of uh, of taking breaks, uh, mm. good posture, good bracing, and and also just not straining. There are a lot of times when I've been painting when I've consciously gone, oh, actually, I'm holding the brush really tight, or I've I've noticed that like I'm I'm not properly braced. And I think because you've got to think about where your attention is when you're painting. Your attention, I would like to think, ninety percent of the time or ninety nine percent of the time is on the actual miniature that you're painting or the thing that you're trying to execute. You're not really mm. thinking about how you're holding the brush or are your arms braced correctly on the table? Are you sitting close enough to the desk? Are you high enough? Are you low enough? Like all those kind of things. Um, obviously, for bad backs or for back pain and stuff like that, like posture is really important. But it's also just as important for for, for hand control and bracing on the desk. Like if you are straining in any way, shape, or form then you're, you're, you're putting pressure on muscles and, and tendons and all this kind of stuff, which you're subjecting them to prolonged periods of, of, mm. uh, of, of, like, of movement or motion or holding a certain position. And that will, that will weigh up and that will obviously give you like give yeah. you pain down the line. So it sounds almost like if, you, if you're holding your, if you're trying to stay in the same position for a long time, so it's almost like a, you know, from old army speak, like it's been in a stress position. Yeah, that's exactly it. And so you're sort of putting your, putting yourself in a stress position. Yeah. We don't need to be in a stress position. It yeah. just puts obviously stress on the joints that you, you know. Is it that you don't need to be though? Because there is an element of like, you obviously need to be as still as possible and sort of being yeah, relaxed that, kind of counteracts that. is down that. to where your body is whilst yeah. you're painting. So if like when I'm painting, I've got, I have quite a low chair to my desk. Yeah. So that, well, cause I'm old anyway, I can barely see anything. <laughs> so my, I'm obviously quite close to the miniatures, but it means, and, when I, even when I was younger, I used to paint at my windowsill, which was quite high. So it means I can have my hands braced yeah. quite up close to where I'm painting. Yeah. But I, I mean, I spend all day Sunday painting, about 13 hours painting. It's a proper session. That's, that's, that's a, a, that's a great session. session, that is. Just yeah. Monster Munch on tap. You know, just, <laughs> <laughs> what flavour of Monster yeah. Munch? Uh, beef, obviously, uh -huh. uh, and I, I think I managed to binge watch about one and a half seasons of Stranger Things again. Nice, nice. Anyway, good choice. Uh, so yeah, so I mean, um, and I didn't have any, I didn't feel and sort of my, I, I was quite comfortable doing that for the whole sort of session. I mean, I did have to stand up at one point um, and then sort of sit back down, but for, for arms and everything, it, you know, it's fine. But I think that's just how you're it is sort yeah. of sat, and if you're slouched as well. And, you know, a bit like that is, is very much posture and, and like arm bracing. Like I would, if you, have, if you, if you obviously that there are, I've got to throw this caveat out there. There are lots of people that potentially have, um, have like, uh, muscular issues or have like something mm, chronic, tremors which, or, and things like something that. Chronic, yeah. which is obviously affecting them. And in those instances, obviously you just got to do the best you can with obviously making sure you're comfortable, making sure you're well postured, making sure you've got a good seat to sit at, making sure your desk is high enough, your chair's high or low enough. Do all the things, tick every box when it comes to doing everything that you can to 
support yourself and p- make stress positions and stuff like that not as 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 detrimental to your muscles and to your tendons and to all the things that obviously give you that biomechanical control stuff. Um, but like biomechanical, if, yeah, what well, is biomechanics? It is, yeah, yeah, right. it is, yeah. yeah like yeah. you know, um, picturing my like inner robot. But well, it is. Yeah. It's, it's like it's just the way the muscles move and the bones move and the tendon. So it's it's all of that. Like, um, but what 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 I was going to say is like um, is it really if you if you haven't got something that, that like a chronic like if you've got not haven't got an illness or you haven't got like a, a a muscular issue or any of those kind of things and if it is just something that you're finding that you've got pain while you're painting then i really would take a step back and assess your painting setup and assess how you've got your hands how you're bracing where your where your bridging points are as in like either you've got elbows on desk forearms mm. on desk are your hands touching are you are you i i i because i use shot glasses i i I, it, the thing I like, and it sounds really silly, but I like- He uses shot glasses as a model holder. Yeah, as a model holder, yeah, yeah. I, I like the fact that I can hold the shot glasses- It takes him so long to paint anything. Yeah, true, yeah. But if I- uh, Explains like, the state I, of I've those got, edge files, doesn't it? If I've got a holder like that, I, I, I like the fact that I can literally hold the model in, in there, and then I've, I've got this lovely recess in my hand whereby my other hand fits in, hmm. so that they, I've got a bridging point of both the hands connecting while I'm painting. Um, and that for me really works. And I, again, but that's just, that's personal. Like you've just got to look at your setup and look at the way that you paint mm. and work out where the strain is coming from. Because if you do have a random pain in your arm, that's, that's becoming, to be, that's becoming a wrist. chronic thing. Yeah. It will be because you're putting your muscles or your tendons or the way that you're sitting or something under some, some sustained stress or yeah. pressure. And that's ultimately the reason for it. You know, when you, um, we have to do sort of, you know, the health and safety thing with people that sit at computers. And yes. They, yeah. You have to, you know, cause you have to have a bit, you have to be in, obviously in a certain posture for that. Correct. Long yeah. bit of, and you have, um, things for your wrist and stuff. Cause they have to be sort of, it has to be level and all the yeah. rest of it. But if you, I, so I, it might be that sometimes, you know, you get this sort of repetitive strain injury, don't you? Could be. Yeah. That. Yeah. Yeah. Or maybe if you, if you're using your, if you're, Sort of like you said, bridging your wrists, putting your wrists on the edge of your desk to paint to support yourself. Could Maybe get those little cushion things on yeah. there and sit, yeah. sit your arm, hands on some. I've cushions. seen a few Maybe people. That. I've seen a few people in the community suggesting that actually on some of our previous posts. Yeah. One thing that I'll do as well actually is have someone else take a photo of you and your hand positioning while you're painting because I think it's hard to assess yourself because you're sort of in that mm. first person point of view. I actually realised this when we when I started doing some painting videos and things like that. I realized some of the bad habits that I was having yeah. with the way I was holding the brush. I was just sort of doing some weird like hand bends and things like that, yeah. which I've had to try and break the habit of. But Look I like, wasn't aware of it until yeah. seeing it sort of in context from a third person point of view, if that makes sense. Yeah. yeah. You end up looking like Gollum trying to catch a fish in a river. <laughs> <laughs> trying to paint, you know. Yeah. 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 But that's what it's probably going to be. It's you're putting yourself under some sustained pressure, you know, or, 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 or strain. And that's what's causing the, the yeah. random pain. I would, get. yeah, definitely figure out what is causing that. Yeah. And don't sort of, force yourself to sit there no and no. take it yeah <laughs> you know, yeah i can paint i can do it <laughs> <laughs> you've got foot on the desk and you're straining <laughs> i will get this edge highlight yeah <laughs> yeah okay on that note thank you everyone for tuning into this week's episode of paint perspective we're going to switch over now to the bonus version of the episode so if you're listening on patreon then do stay tuned otherwise if you're watching on youtube we'll of course see you next week uh the amazon tv series trailer has dropped oh my god <laughs> <laughs> i've i've had some controversial opinions on this no, in the uh, past okay i'm a little bit worried 